Hey guys, this is Mel, and I am back to talk about Legends of Tomorrow. It has been a while, but the finale just dropped today on March 2nd, 2022, and I wanted to talk about the full season. So huge spoiler alert, if you haven't seen all of season 7 that has 13 episodes, please go do so first, and then come back and see what I have to say about the season. My other video reminders are up on screen, so take a moment to remind yourselves of those. Um, I'm going to do this a lot different. I did not take any notes during the, because I didn't plan on making any videos, so... Today, after watching the finale, I figured, let's talk about it. What do I remember? And I thought that'd be something a little bit interesting. So as you know, with Legends, it was a little bit different. We're not oh, we're not traveling to a new uh, time period with each episode because at the end of season six, they got stranded in 1925 Odessa, Texas. So I'll mention briefly about the timelines for each episode. Uh, I will also mention any key reminders I had, because as I said, um, uh, I didn't take any very detailed notes, so this is going off my memory or what I was able to find just briefly without going it. Like sometimes all it takes is a word to kind of jog your memory, so we'll see how that goes. And then I'll take, I'll mention any favorites that I remember from it, and then if there are any very specific peeves that I remember from it, I will mention it. But I will say from the brief notes that I have right now, there aren't many peeves especially in like earlier in the season since that, that was that started like months ago. But anyways, let's give this a try. So up on screen, I guess I'll keep it for the whole time. I'll just have up on screen the whole list of episodes. So let's start with the first half, which aired in 2021. So that's the first seven episodes. Uh, with episode one, I would say, uh, again, like I said, we're still stuck in 1925 Odessa, Texas after their wave rider got blown up by a second wave rider. The main takeaway I can come from from this episode was the fact that we got the the introduction, or I guess the first appearance of human Gideon on, I guess, a permanent basis after Astra tries to use magic to reconstruct the blown up bits of the Wave Rider. So, and also I believe this is also the episode where they plan to travel all the way to New York to find uh, Dr. Gwyn Davies, who was the inventor of time travel, um, since they ended up being in the year where he would actually where he was meant to do the discovery. So there's that second episode, uh, which is the need for, or else, yeah, the need for speed. Um, we're still in 1925, uh, but now we're on a train traveling to New York. And this episode, I remember, this is where we get introduced to the fact that androids or robots are real. We learn about clones, biological clones through Ava. We learn about creature clones through Sarah and Bishop last season. So now we're dealing with uh, androids. Um, not quite like clone wait i guess that's a question is it is the evil clones still androids or are they completely separate things now because we did see huh that's a question there anyways there's that third episode is a huge one i cannot say the title because it actually looks like a computer file name but uh, and rightfully so, uh, but we have the team traveling in 1925 to New York as well, but we also jump to 2213 in Vancouver when we kind of check back in with Bishop as he remembers pieces of being um, abducted by the legends to be brought to uh, 1925 Odessa, Texas to stop his future self. But anyways, episode three was the 100th episode, and um, we see a lot of familiar faces, and the reason why the episode title was like a, a computer error code is because it's uh, we get sucked into Gideon's uh, programming, and um, uh, all of her memories are slowly being wiped by this uh, evil AI, which gets introduced with the, the Bishop storyline of it all. So we do see a lot of familiar faces, a lot of characters that have either left the team or they have sadly perished um so that so that was fun there to see all the little bits and pieces that i guess gideon um took a great uh great note of keeping in her memory bank so there's that fourth episode title uh speakeasy does it we're now in chicago in 1925 in this episode i remember gideon singing um, in order to help um, the original sin singer to escape from an abusive relationship. Um, this is also when the legends are kind of split. We got part of our team traveling in one, and then we have uh, part of the team being um, Sarah, Ava, Zari, and Gary, Nate, and Bayrod traveling together. 
to get to Gwen Davies, and then we have um, Astra Spooner and Gideon trying to catch up to them. And one of their side detours was helping a uh, uh, all 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 all, all women band, um, and s- stuff happens. So there's that fifth storyline. It's a mad, 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 mad scientist. We are now in New York in 1925. This is where we meet Gwen Davies, which um, could be John Constantine's um, doppelganger. They did make a comment on the fact that he looks quite similar. Um, everyone kind of uh, skirts around it, but then it's Zari who says like he looks really c- close to Constantine. I did have the question whether or not there's an actual blood relation between the characters, as if like maybe Gwen Davies was a uh, um, was uh either an ancestor or maybe like a distant distant relative to john constantine they never brought it up though because you know what john kingers and such but anyways this is the episode that the all the legends reunite and they are able to actually time travel with the help of uh uh dr davies which will lead to the sixth episode uh which is duex latrina which they time travel to 1986 to Trent noble um we also get some um Side storylines of 2214 in Vancouver with Bishop trying to uh, re- uh, trying to recreate the Gideon program, which is what creates the, the second Gideon AI that we deal with. The thing I take away from this episode is the fact that this is the start of the Gideon and Gary, the human Gideon and Gary relationship um, that we see throughout the rest of the episode, uh, rest of the season. So who's that? Now, the last episode we get before we go on the winter break was 707. A woman's place is in the war effort. We are set in 1943 for this one. Don't know where specifically, but they do end up working at uh, a factory, building airplanes, I believe. Um, And it's the mm, disruption of the timeline is what brings the evil wave rider, Bishop's wave rider, to them. This is actually also the episode i guess where we get um the connection that bishop's the one who blew up the legends wave rider back in back at the end of like season six end of season six beginning of season seven um but this episode so like his timeline now matches up with what's happening with the legends but also we see bishop actually joining up with the legends when he finds out his his ai is trying to control him and such so there's that so then we go on a winter break um and then we come back with episode 708 um as the first to air in 2022 and this is paranoid android uh takes place in 1986 um in uh, in ukraine and this whole episode is taken in the uh point of view of the evil wave riders and her team of robo legends because at the end of 707, we realized that the, the team hunting our legends down are robot copies of them. So the whole episode is dealt through um, Android's perspective. I really like the fact that we got to see Android Sarah really trying to pick up the pieces of like something not being right, being suspicious, and then coming to realize that they aren't, they aren't hunting the robo-legends. They are the robo-legends, so it's a huge identity crisis right there. But then I also really like the, the different characterizations that we got of the legends through their robot counterparts um and how much uh evil ai gideon changed certain personality aspects of them to make them very very different from the real legends a little bit more um bloodthirsty and um, compliant with protecting the timeline so that was very interesting but in the end robo sarah is uh reprogrammed again to to pretty much be the assassin instead of the captain so there's that um but the ninth episode, uh, lowest common denominator, uh, takes place in no specific timeline. Takes place in the hell dimension where they go back when they use those keys to kind of have a safe haven in um, Constantine's uh, little uh, house. But the, the legends are kind of stuck in a re- reality show run by uh, souls uh, in hell. Um, but the thing I really liked about this episode, even though it was pretty crazy, it was just seeing all the different heightened tropes that you see not only in reality TV shows, but also just uh, in stories in general. So that was pretty fun having the legends slowly become these tropes because they were stuck in this hell, hellish version of a reality show. So that was pretty entertaining. Plus, it was also just funny, too, as uh, someone who is trying to go into the film industry as a screenwriter, just getting that 
behind the scene aspects of like what the camera crew does, like what's filmed and what's focused on those. That's pretty fun there. Um, and then 710, the fixed point. This one is interesting. We go into 1914 in Sar Sarajevo. And um, this is where the, the team is pretty much trying to stop the World War One. And since it's a fixed point, uh, time, you can't change a fixed point. It's something that always has to happen. So we find out that time doesn't fight back. It's someone assigned, a fixer is assigned to the fixed point to make sure the thing that's supposed to be fixed in time always happens. Even though there's a whole bunch of time travelers who pretty much compete to try to change this fixed point. We find out that Eobark Thawne is the designated fixer of this fixed point. So what I really liked about this episode is just like all the different, I guess, Groundhog Day time loopy stuff that um, Sarah had to go through to try to find a way to kind of defeat the, the fixer and actually stop the war long enough to alert the evil wave rider that they'd done it. But that's when she cracked a deal with Eobard Thawne saying that, uh, um, that they just needed it to deviate from the original timeline long enough to get the wave rider there and then he just fix it right up like he's always meant to so that was pretty cool there i also really liked the um the conversation between sarah uh wow between zari and spooner um fine it was funny how they they believed on surface level they had nothing in common but when they finally dug deeper they really found that they do have a lot in common also really liked that zari was able to help uh spooner uh, pretty much figure out who she was when it came to relationships. I thought that was pretty interesting and very, very cool to have that happen. And it, it definitely was very emotional. So I really appreciate um, that conversation being made and the fact that it was even mentioned to begin with as something to be brought up. So I really appreciate that as well. Episode 11, Rage Against the Machines kind of continues off where uh, episode 10 take, uh finishes in 1914 Sarajevo we now have the legends having uh lured in the evil wave rider so now 11 uh, episode 11 is them trying to take control of the wave rider but this is where they realize that the team hunting them down is their robo doppelgangers so what I really liked about the episode is all the doppelganger trickery where it's like them swapping places or fooling the other robos or to try to like eliminate them one by one um since they can't do it right on because like they have robot they're robots and stuff so all that trickery was hilarious to find and you know I'm a sucker for when it comes to actors having to play opposite each other in very different roles and such so there's that the only peeve I did have with this episode though was the fact that um it was Zari 2.0 who they used to pretend to be Robo Zari and like don't get me wrong, I love 2.0 Zari, but then at the same time, it's like she still has access to Zari, like the OG Zari, who is a computer hacker, and Robo Zari is a computer hacker. So if you needed one of the two Zaris to go and imitate Robo Zari, why wouldn't she use the Zari that's a hacker who knows how to deactivate Gideon, than the one who can maybe impersonate her um, personality? yet doesn't have necessarily the skills to shut Gideon down, right? That that didn't really make much sense to me. It's like, it was great to see, like, that whole double Zari fight thing was hilarious. Um, but, like, for me, it was just like, you have access to hacker Zari. Why would you, if you weren't so sure that you could pull off that aspect of Robo Zari, why would you not just call on hacker Zari to help out, you know? So, there's that. I mean, it's not like it's you bringing on another actor to bring another character on. It's literally the same actress who's just playing a different character out of the three possible ones she's been given, right? So she did an amazing job either way. It was just like that log logistical question of like, why would you not call on the one who knew how to hack, you know? Anyways, episode 12, too legit to quit. Now, this has no time zone because they're just up in the temporal zones pretty much stuck as hostages on the evil wave rider with only just evil Gideon so in this episode this is where human Gideon and Gideon try to make bring negotiations and that comes to the fact that 
Evil Gideon wants the legends to retire and be returned to their timelines, and in and in doing so, Human Gideon would be her captain. So it's kind of like the protocols are in place. What I really liked about this episode is that we actually got to see all these potential futures about where the legends would go if they signed these contracts and have them have their reactions to it. Um, it also had me worried because it was starting to ve- feel like it was very like we were building up to a series finale and still at this point we had no clue whether or not we'd get a season eight or not so it had me really worried about like oh what, you're showing me these these futures like is that because it's going to be ending is this like your way of letting me know like all these characters get a happy ending after like i don't know but what i really thought was very cute was sarah and ava seeing that they had a kid at camp and then just their reactions to it in the moment i kid you not the moment they showed that and i read the synopsis for the season finale about sarah having a secret i immediately went like oh she's pregnant that like what way to like gear it up then to show that and so it's like oh she's pregnant um so like i figured like and that was before i saw the title of the finale which we'll talk about now episode 13 which is knocked down knocked up knocked up is literally like person's pregnant right so it's like uh my this is leading somewhere kind of a thing but anyways we'll get to that in a moment but it takes place in 1916 and in france when um the legends realized that uh davies um gwen davies went back to try to save the real alan not realizing it's a fixed point so all the legends um uh, team up to to save him and um get the help of the fixer of that point um who, who they introduce as uh, Mike, who they find out later, is actually Booster Gold. Um, so they were actually able to save Alan and put their plan into place. So yay for legend. So anyways, favorite thing I like about the episode, like what I talked about, is that they actually confirm that Ava Lance is pregnant. And like Sarah's secret is the fact that she is pregnant. Not that she was purposely keeping that secret from Ava. It was the fact that like she herself, like, okay, so at first we saw that she cut her hand and that she wasn't healing. So then when that happened, I thought, oh, is that the secret instead? And it's not that she's pregnant because before that moment, we've been already told that they had planned for Ava to be the one to be pregnant. But then it was Gary who confirmed it, who revealed it to Sarah that, no, she's the one that's pregnant because of her uh, creature biology. Um, And it was all simply done through a simple kiss and exchange of DNA, which allowed for the fertilization of her 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 egg and now she's actually pregnant so that was a surprise there um but so glad i wonder if it's because they saw that future that's what triggered it for sarah um but yeah um it was just like to see their happiness over that which is like over the moon kind of a thing but the peeve i did have about the finale is the fact that nathan is leaving the team he says goodbye to all of the legends and then he disappears into the air, the air totem which Zari gives to him because he's going to be living in the air totem with Zari 1.1 uh, with OG Zari which is what he's been doing for the last six weeks um so like they haven't been on a mission for six weeks before they found out that um uh Gwen went back in time to 1916 and that and he left the team because he lost his his uh his steel ability when he saved Alan um from no man's land so that's something there. Um, but the last scene of the season shows the legends not only getting back on the wave rider, but getting arrested for time crimes along with Mike, aka Booster Gold, by people we don't know. So the big question is who is arresting them? I mean, we know it's not the time bureau because that was that was done with. We know it's not the what was that place in season one? It's not that place because they destroyed that. So, like, who's arresting them? So that's a question there. Um, also, the question of the people who, this group that arrested the legends, were they always following the legends and just trying to catch up with them to arrest them? Or were they following Mike, a.k.a. Booster Gold, because he left his station at the fixed point and then through that they found out that the legends were also there? I don't know. Um, another question to have from this is, is there an AI attached to this wave rider that was built by Astra's magic successfully? 
or is the human Gideon now the one who holds that position? Is like she physically tied to to the wave rider? What's going to happen there? And then another question, last one is: After Sarah gives birth, will she give her? Will she get her powers back, or are they now permanently transferred to the baby? Like, will Sarah is Sarah only temporarily? Um. Uh, human like not invincible anymore and then after she gives birth then she's invincible again or like what's what's gonna happen then so that's the question there but again like i said before as of this recording on um march 2nd there's no news about a season eight all i know is is that if they do um if they do get renewed that booster gold is supposed to play a bigger part in that season but there's no news and I'm kind of worried because usually by this point at least before the seasons have ended in the past we've always known whether or not Legends was going to be coming back and then they were always just going to be mid-season returns kind of a thing but right now I think this is the first season where like I actually don't know by the time the finale airs where we sit with an upcoming season or not so I guess we'll have to wait and see about that though otherwise guys that's pretty much it what you guys think of the season what you guys think of the finale specifically uh what are your hopes for season eight please let me know in the comments down below love to hear your own thoughts theories and opinions about all that stuff also don't forget to like this video subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos if you haven't done so already if you want check out my tumblr page link for that is down below I am behind, but anything I post from Tumblr is connected there. I do have to go reconfigure that as well. And also, same thing for WordPress, link down below as well. Otherwise, guys, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for your patience. I hope you come back and just check out what else I have on this channel. And hopefully, fingers crossed for some Season 8 news. So until then, guys, this is Mel. Wish you all a great day, great week, wherever you are. Bye for now.